Hello, friends. What you see here is a regular parking lot at a beautiful park. And amongst these cars, you wouldn't guess that one of these was somebody's stealth home. Now, I'm not a big fan of being, like, overly stealth, but this is pretty stealth. Like, if you saw this van in the middle of a lot, like, you wouldn't suspect anything, let alone that there's a whole house inside. <laughs> it took me about two days to film this. Um, but I'm pretty proud of my build. <laughs> um, basically, I got a surprise job on Sunday, which is when I plan to film my van tour. And so you'll see my shirt change during the van tour. Hey guys, welcome to my newly renovated Toyota Sienna camper van. <laughs> Welcome to my new tiny home <laughs> on wheels. <laughs> I live in a 2005 Toyota Sienna and la most of last week I spent uh, building a bed, um, building a platform to put these cabinets on and then uh, putting these cabinets together. These are pre-fabricated items. So you may have noticed something new here. This is not just a whiteboard. This is a thermoelectric cooler. For my purposes, it's a fridge. Um, I have a lot to say about this and how it's working out. In addition to that, I've added a new power station. This is the Max Oak Blue Eddy. Um, and I bought it exclusively to run the fridge. Again, we'll talk about that later. Um, I built a new bed, which I'll do a little bit of a focus on that in a second. Um, and I've just, I've just added and enhanced, <laughs> um, this, this van for myself. I'm going to do a lot of talking off camera because the space is so small. I can't really move around in it and like show you things. So yeah, let's get to it. So one of the main things I wanted to accomplish with this build was giving myself a custom bed that sort of allowed me to use the space I wanted to. The biggest problem with the camping cot is I had to keep the passenger seat pushed up really far in order to fit the camping cot on the stable part of the floor. That is the part of the floor that doesn't sink down into the back sort of, I like to call it the well. It's the whole area where the rear stowing go seats in a Toyota Sienna fold down. And if the rear seats were in, the third row seats, it would just be a semi-flat-ish surface and you would have a big cargo area in the back of your um, two passenger seats in the second row. So the third row leaves a big well in the back. So unlike some minivans, you can't just push your bed all the way to the back because you have that dip space. The bed is five foot five inches long. I'm five four. So it's just enough room for me to lay on it. The uh, 
sleeping bag is a little bit longer than that but it doesn't really matter because it'll automatically sort of crunch up to where where I'm creeping in it um I got a full-size um foam mattress topper and I cut it down to work with the bed what I built on the end of the bed is sort of a if well I bought a set of hinges so that the a foot and a half of the bed would hinge down um and it's mostly worked out fine and it allows me to be able to slide the seat backwards and forwards as needed so that's been good unfortunately by the time i added the foam and everything it was still kind of blocking the door a lot so it didn't quite give me the clearance i want but it does allow the passenger seat to move and it allows me to more easily get into the car on that side if necessary and sometimes when i park I'd rather be, if I parked and I'm out of the car and I'm just going to bed, I'd rather come in on the passenger side as opposed to the driver's side, which may be on the street. Or honestly, in the middle of the night, it just might be for quote-unquote stealth purposes. My clothes have remained fairly standard. They're still in a bin under my bed. Um, so yeah, like nothing really much has changed there. In fact, I created the height of the bed based on the bin. So, it's kind of hard to show what's going on with the cabinets because they're on top of this platform, which I'll get to when I talk about the garage. But basically, I just bought two sets of cabinets off of Target. I'll show you them right now. Let's cut to those. Um, I measured and measured and re-measured. I was mostly inspired by one of my primary inspirations on <laughs> YouTube. I was inspired by uh, Chrome Valdez and the fact that that's how he started out. He literally bought some home, home furnishings offline. The thing is, a cargo van is bigger, and so it's easier to fit standard size things in there. Me, I was looking for small bathroom cabinets. I was looking in children's furniture. I was looking in all kinds of like unusual areas that aren't like bedroom or like living room furnishings. Um, even though I think that my tall cabinet is like, it's meant to be like a small like side cabinet in miscellaneous room. I don't know that it was assigned there. There was a lot of bedroom cabinetry I was looking at. And then the six cube thing is a very common like bedroom decor items. But I was very much looking for things that were that had a a big use with a small footprint um the other major storage thing i kind of stole i mostly stole from janelle eliana um i saw where she had her water bottle this thing set up right behind like her headrest and it was kind of strapped to the red headrest and it was high enough that it could you could just like get water I was afraid it would leak and in fact I didn't have this thing secured properly and the first time I drove off the whole thing fell over and there was like water all over the floor and I was afraid I broke it but since I've set it back up and tightened the the front thing like it doesn't drip which has been my biggest fear my biggest fear with having to speak it facing down is that it would drip and it's like so much easier to like use water now in addition to that I also bought this I forgot what it's called. I'll, I'll put it up on the screen right now. It's called like a Weirin spray bottle. And that's what I'm mostly using for cleaning. I also use it for brushing my teeth. I brush down my toothbrush after I brush my teeth with it. Um, it's fairly useful. <laughs> um, I really, really enjoy it. And it's, and it's super great. For my utensils, what I actually have is a monitor stand. Yes, that is a monitor stand. Um, here's a picture of how it looks on Target. Um, it basically has a flat top and a little drawer in the front. I feel like if I exceed the amount of utensils that belong in that drawer, it's a sign that I need to purge. And my... <sighs> Now my trash cans... I found by accident and I've been using them in the car for a few months um, I was looking for something thin tallish I looked at a whole bunch of things that weren't necessarily trash cans I looked at storage bins I looked at um you know those cereal those tall thin plastic cereal containers I didn't like what I was finding as actual trash can selection and one day I accidentally found the perfect thing 
file boxes. Yes, they were these file boxes with these plastic lids and it was super perfect. And I originally bought one just for garbage, but I kept trying to separate my recycling from my regular garbage, like to at least go that far. I wasn't going to go as far as like composting and trash and separating paper and bottles and cans. Like that was too far, especially because I have to find trash so randomly, but I thought I could at least make an effort to separate recycling from regular trash. And so what I did is I went and got a second one. Um, and so, so I bought two sets of battery-operated multicolored lights. They have a remote to them, but they can also be turned on and off uh, manually. It took me a while to figure it out. They were kind of really cheap, came with horrible instructions, and the remote literally disintegrated in my hand to the point that I had to tape it together with gaff tape. But they work. So I was fairly inspired a lot and have been by my, my friend Chrome. Um... He, uh, as you can see, I have my Weirdos Unite hoodie hanging right here. You know, on his initial draft of making his van nicer, he just bought things that already exist. And I knew I wanted a large area to use for food prep and preparation. But instead of building something, because I couldn't figure out a way to build something, I was like, is there a table that literally I could unfold that would give me more of a spread? Now, I have a small table. I have a small folding table that I've been using as sort of a desk and also a cooking surface. But it's so short that once the stove is on there, there's no room for anything else. There's no room for food prep. And so I wanted something longer. Now, there are so many ways that I can set up that long table. Um, I cannot have those, like, little wash basins there until, like, I want to wash at the end. I find it useful to have the basin there to throw my dirty dishes in. So, usually, like, it's on the corner of the table. I little, I little overloaded it for photographic purposes. Um, but I use it a bunch of ways, and it really helps to be able to pull out that counter space and then just tuck it back. It is a little bit cramped to do the maneuvering and a little bit tricky, but, like... It's been entirely worth it just to have that amount of space sort of to spread out on when I want to cook. The other thing I added, and I'm so excited about this, was an oven. Now for the oven setup, I set it up on the smaller table because it can go a little bit shorter than the long table. The long table's a little bit too high, and the top of the oven would be like brushing the top of the van, which is not good for me, even though I have a fire extinguisher, or at least I have a fire emergency thingy some clearance between the top of the oven and the top of the van which is great and makes me much more comfortable than having it like super freaking close um so i'm really i sort of feel better about setting it up at the foot of the bed i don't usually even have the fabric like hanging over the side just for photographic purposes it looked better than the bare wood um but usually that's out the way i pull the curtain out of the way and then the oven which is still set up back here is right there and as you can see, there's a clearance of space between uh, the top of the oven and the top of the van and also the windows open. Um, I have been feeling the limitations of only having like one stove top, but it's been working and it's something I can solve in the future. And it's not important to solve like right now. But what I did want to solve was one being able, that's not one, let's use this finger. That is so much more better. This looks weird. <laughs> so one, I wanted to be able to uh, use an oven. And two, um, I wanted to be able to do it in the van. And three, I didn't want it to take over space. And the big thing I want to be able to do is convert back down to that base space that I showed you in the first shot but then be able to have the things I need when I need them and then put them away. And so the compactness of the Coleman stove, at least, oh, sorry, oven, <laughs> not stove, um, really made me want to purchase it and see if I could make use of it. And it wasn't a huge money loss to get one. Um, I'll put the Amazon link down and you can follow that link <laughs> if you're interested in one. But uh, yeah, I've been really, really happy with it. It stores under my bed. It's out of the way. It has and added a lot of bulk or taken up a lot of space in the van and it's added so many more options. 
Now, for the purposes of having ventilation while I was cooking, what I did was I made me basically two half window covers because I wanted, you know, airflow through the front and the back while I was cooking in the van. Because cooking in the van is sort of a big thing for me. It's one of the biggest things I want to be able to do, like, at the drop of a hat, wherever I'm comfortable doing it. So... What I did was I made what I call half window covers. So I have my full window covers that cover like the full window. And then I have these partial ones that only like cover part of it so that I can roll the window down and ventilation can get through while I'm cooking, especially because I'm using gas based cookers. And that's sort of been my solve for the problem. I'm not dead yet. It seems to be working, but I do have a CO2 detector. So no worries there. <laughs> So one of the things you might have noticed when I was showing you my cargo carrier on top of the van is that I have a new wagon. This thing is awesome. It folds pretty flat. To me, these wagons are still pretty bulky when they fold up, but I definitely didn't want to keep it in the car. But it's great when I'm doing delivery jobs, especially for Amazon, because I do Amazon Flex. And um, when those jobs have like large things that I need to transport from the car to a doorway. Um, it's good to have the wagon and the wagon actually can fit like right here, at least while I'm delivering between the chairs when it's folded up. So if I need it quickly accessible, I can keep it here. And then when I want to death out of my way, I put it on the roof. And that's another reason I'm glad I got rid of my center console. Um, my fantasy ladder is actually on Amazon and it's this ladder. Um, but I couldn't afford that and everything else I wanted to do. Um, so I ended up getting, uh, this three step ladder from Costco. It allows me to reach my attic and can be stored in my garage. Yes, I consider myself having a garage now. As much as I wanted to have like this gorgeous view of this really cool thing when you open my back door, it just wasn't practical. Whereas a garage was practical. Um, I like to joke that I have a basement and a garage. And I consider the basement the area that's like right underneath. Um, sort of what I used to call the well area that I built the platform on. And then my internal cabinets are on top of that platform. Underneath of it is stuff I don't need that much. Like my tools are underneath of there. Um, the tools that I need for work, I'll simply go to the back of the van, grab them out, you know, once I'm dressed and ready to go and everything, and then I lock up the back of the van and I'm on with my day. I don't need to be able to grab them every day, all the time. So it's kind of pointless to have them... Why, why was that person beeping? I don't know. So it's kind of pointless to have them sort of in my way all the time. I also didn't want them on the roof because they're kind of, some of them are kind of expensive. It's something I do need. It's something that I'm worried about. Um, a lot of stuff on the roof is really, it's either really awkward to pull out or like something I don't use all the time. In one of the bins on the roof, I have a hose just in case I like, see a tap I can use for some free water I bought myself a hose with a little sprayer I'm not going to dig that out for this video to show it to you um my wagon is up there because it's kind of I love it but um it's kind of big and in the way but it folds up flat enough that it can fit in that cargo carrier I can pull it out when I need it and it's an easy way to lug a bunch of stuff from the car for cooking for exercise for whatever to a location 
Um, the, the, and my exercise stuff is back there because I can't use it in the van. The van's too small. Um, so I leave my exercise stuff back in the garage and I kind of love having a garage. Like it's not the prettiest thing to look at when you open the door, but it's like completely functional to the way I have to look at the van. So let's really quickly cover my, the front of my car. Um, and I'm not going to get into detail to everything. I'm, I've honestly gotten to more detail than I probably should have, which is why this is taking two days to shoot. But, uh, everybody knows I have like my decorative items in the front windshield. I also have my Lucy light up there that I, that I've finally shown. Um, it charges in the front windshield. And if I need a bright light in the back, I don't need a bright light to go to bed. I can just turn on my new little LED lights and it's enough light for me to just go through the curtain and jump into bed and go to bed. But if I need a bright light, if I'm working back there, if I'm cooking back there, I basically take the Lucy light from the front in the back with me at night. I flatten it back up and I stick it in the windshield in the morning. And whenever I need it, it's usually charged. I really want to get the USB charging one because it's kind of, sometimes I get back there and I'm like, damn it, I want the light. So then I have to like reach over or climb back over to the front of the car to grab this out the windshield. Not fun. Oops. I accidentally hit my. Okay. Um, I didn't really talk about it on YouTube, but I ripped out the center console between the seats. I was sick of it. I didn't want it there. The problem was there was exposed metal after that. And I didn't really have anything to fit the space. And for a while, I had a little, like, rug thing in the space. But it was moving all the time. And it just wasn't the greatest solution. So when I ripped up the back floor, what I did was I made a sort of um a template of the hole. And then I cut it out of the rug I ripped up and I filled in the hole in the front so that the whole front is the gray carpet that came from Toyota. Oh, well. Another thing I learned is though I like having my passenger seat available, I rarely actually have passengers. So instead of having my dirty clothes like in my way back there, I started putting them in the front seat, like in front of the front seat on the floor. And it's been like the best solution ever. Ever, The laundry bag is out of my way. I don't have to think about it. I tried a lot of solutions. I tried shoving it under my bed, but then it was just taking up space that could be taken up by clean clothes. I tried having it behind my bed, but again, it was just stealing space for like no reason, just to hold dirty clothes. I tried putting it in a cargo carrier on the roof, but that meant I had to climb up there every time I wanted to drop off dirty clothes. But I did like the idea of having it away for me also i tried having it all the way in the back but again i had to get out of the car in order to dump off my dirty clothes having them in right in front of the front seat has been like the best and then when i go to the laundromat i grab my laundry tabs from the front seat i grab my bag i go in the laundromat put all my clean clothes back drop the bag right in the front seat and if it gets really big and annoying i know it's time to go to the laundromat so it's actually been amazing just deciding to throw that like right in front of my front seat not the most attractive thing, but like the space that I want attractive is my living space, which is what I learned, which is why I don't mind the garage not being like the prettiest thing to look at when you open the back door. It's when you open that side door and you're seeing the place where I live, where I wanted it to look like just a little bit better. And so I feel like I accomplished that goal. <laughs> 